Hey everyone, Techni here with not necessarily a review, maybe like a review and kind of a conversation of three very popular keyboards we have today. That is the GK61 with yellow optical switches, the Razer Huntsman Mini with red linear switches, and then the Matrix keyboard, the clicks version over here. Now, while these three keyboards have been so popular, number one, the uh, Matrix one, because it clicks right, Fortnite community, the Razer Huntsman Mini is just, again, the first big company with the 60% compact board and their switches over here. Talking about the GK61, the yellow optical switches have been known as the fastest switch out right now, and they don't break the bank. Now, two things I want to mention before we actually dive in and start looking at and comparing the boards right here. Number one, as far as the GK61, 61 we have over here is actually a DK61. If you caught my review of the GK61, so many 61s, right? With the yellow optical switches, there's so many variations out there. So again, kind of, you can really break it down and find out whichever one's the cheapest and then get your switches separately or something because you got an SK61, a GK61, a DK61, a DK61E. That's what we have over here. It's the Diraya DK61E. It was the cheapest one I could find and I actually really like the case on this over the GK61. GK61, which we'll talk a lot about later. I know I'm getting confused out here, and I'll leave links to all these down in the description. So again, there's multiple optical keyboards out there that you can find and you know still get the same thing. So don't be locked into one. Again, it's pretty much like this mass produced and every company puts a different name on it. So again, DK61E over here, same thing as GK61, yellow optical switches. Other thing I wanna mention before we dive into this is as far as the Razer Huntsman Mini over here, I have this thing incredibly modded. You can go check out my video about it as well because you remember the board at first, I just couldn't stand it. It was clanky, rattly, it felt cheap. So I modded it. I put a foam underneath it. I actually sprayed the top with Flex Seal, two coats right here and lubed the switches. So again, whenever we do the sound test and you listen to this it's not stock so just remember that all right so first off let's talk about aesthetics in the build of all three boards here as you can tell they are all 60 percent layout starting with the gk61 dk61 sk61 whatever the build is very solid right here no flex no bend whatever it's not heavy it's not light it's kind of right in between right there on the bottom you have four rubber feet no pop out feet but you do have a very nice stock ergonomic incline right there plenty good just like that and it connects by USB-C on the far right. Now coming over to the Razer Huntsman Mini here, this has the floating key design, so you do see that optical switch underneath there, a little bit of the gray popping out and everything, but it is very nice as far as our RGB being able to bleed through there. Very nice, vibrant RGB. Now out of the box, again, mine is modded. Out of the box, it does feel awfully light, especially for what you're paying for with this board. But again, mine is modded here, so it does have some loft right now. Make sure to check out that video if you're interested in that. Anyways, on the bottom of this guy, you got four rubber feet and two pop pop out levels right there, which is really nice for the adjustability for you. And it connects by USB-C, kind of tucked away in there a little bit. But as far as the build right here, it's quite simple. Again, floating key design, metal plate, bam, your switches are there, and then your keycaps. Now coming over here to the Matrix and Clicks keyboard. This is a GK61, minus the optical switches, right? This is using mechanical switches. You can get the GK61 in mechanical or optical. But as far as the build, the plate, the PCB, the software, the case, it's all GK61 right there as you see how it rounds around the edge right here that is a standard gk61 case going back to where we looked at that dk61e and it's sharp around the edges that's that newer style design which i really like it just gives it a little more bold as cheesy and simple as it sounds i do like that dk61e case a little bit better maybe it's just because i've seen so many gk61s and i'm kind of bored of it now right but as far as the matrix one as you can tell it is red clicks a little signature down there matrix branded on the other side again the four rubber feet in the bottom and connects by USB C on the right side. Now talking about the keycaps on all three boards right here, they are all using double shot PBT keycaps. Even the cheaper DK61E is using double shot PBT and they are all thick across all three boards. Of course with the Matrix you're getting a black and red theme, the uh, Razer you're getting a white and then over here the DK61E you're getting that standard black or of course if you get the white version. Stinker about DK61E for some people is all of your shortcuts are printed right on top of the keycaps. Can look a little cluttered to some I personally like them because I can never remember shortcuts on a 60% keyboard, which is what I don't like about 60% keyboards, right? 
So it's really nice to have your shortcuts there as far as your arrows, your lighting effects, and then your media controls and stuff. Really cool to have that. Now the cool thing about all these boards here is you can slap just about any keycap on them. If you want some put-in keycaps, HyperX, or how about some of those HK Gaming ones we just checked out? Again, you can put just about any keycap set on any of these keyboards and you'll be good to go. So as far as aesthetics, I mean, you all know me, I'm gonna give the Matrix one the win right here. Come on, it's black and red. Like, I stink and love it. White underplate, it just looks awesome. Now, the red of the keycaps is a little bit darker than the case, and you do notice it. I mean, I don't know, even if I put it far away, like, I don't know if you guys can really notice it on camera if I bring it just like that. But again, the keycaps are a little bit darker than the case, kind of throws it off a little bit right here. But as far as the build of all of them, I mean, they're all decent. None of them are great. I think I'd be pushing it. I'd say they're good. That's where I'd put them. I'd say the build of all of them are good. It doesn't scream anything amazing, doesn't scream anything bad. All right, so next up, what I would like to do here is give you a sound test of all three boards. Over here on the GK61, DK61E, I keep mixing myself up with these things. Anyways, we're using the optical yellow switches over here. On the Razer Huntsman Mini, we're using the red linear switches, incredibly modded, again, with the flex seal, and then the foam underneath, and then lubed switches. So don't take this as right out the box, <laughs> again. Um, over here on the Matrix and Clicks keyboard, we're using the red Gateron switches. All right, so as you just heard in that sound test right there, all three of these sound drastically different, right? Talking DK61 over here, GK61, they're all gonna sound the same, right? They're definitely a little more thonky, a little deeper sound, but definitely a little plasticky sounding. And they honestly feel plasticky as well. Because again, it's just an optical switch going down. It's not pressing anything else, it's just going straight down. They feel plasticky. Coming over here to the Razer Huntsman Mini. This guy feels stinking amazing now that I modded it, you know, out of the box again, I, I didn't like it. It felt very cheap and it was rattly and clanky all over the place. Trust me, if you have this board, go check out my mod video and it really makes some fantastic improvements. It's nothing too hard easy either. Pretty easy and it does sound good. You still get a little bit of rattle with this guy, but man, it just sounds fantastic. Now, talking about the uh, Matrix and Clicks keyboard over here, this one sounds like your standard mechanical keyboard, right? Get some of that clank in there high-pitched key press, stabilizers are meh at the best, a little bit of lube on these guys, but it sounds pretty good. So again, across all three right here, very drastic sounds, even out of the box on the uh, Razer one, it sounds like a silent switch because you got the rubber dampeners on it, right? My personal favorite as far as sound, I think would have to be the Razer one, of course, modded. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the most important topic right here, and that is gonna be the switches. And that's probably why these keyboards are catching so much hype and traction right now, minus, of course, within the Fortnite community as well, but that is as far as these switches being incredibly fast. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and talk about the Matrix keyboard and get this one out of the way, because these guys are using pretty much just a standard mechanical switch. We have Gateron red switches here, but you can get this board in the blues, the browns, and then the speed silvers. And I'm sure a lot of you is out there when you hear speed silver, you're like, oh, wow, that's what I need, right? Talking about the reds, they're using 45 grams of force, two millimeters of actuation, and four millimeters of total travel. As far as Gateron speed silvers, very hard to find any solid info on them. So we're gonna compare these right to the cherry silvers. And what the silvers do is they pretty much reduce the actuation time. They bring it down, at least on cherries, to 1.2 instead of the two millimeters. In my previous video on this, I asked people to give me some solid numbers and I got a whole bunch of different variations. So so again, I think we're all kind of mixed up. If you know the exact numbers on Gateron Speed Silvers, 
please leave it down in the comments. But again, please make sure they're solid before we start telling everybody. But again, as far as the Matrix keyboard here, nothing is crazy about the switches. They're all pretty much standard mechanical switches. Now coming over to the next two boards, this is where things start getting pretty fun. Let's start off with the Razer Huntsman Mini here with the red linear optical switches. This is the version two, by the way, where they got the silent uh, dampener on the bottom. So again, if you've ever used a cherry silent, kind of expect that to feel just like this. Bottoms out very nice and soft. I personally love how it feels, but these are 40 grams of force right here, 3.5 millimeters of total travel and one millimeter of actuation. So as just comparing to like that basic switch of the matrix right there, you can tell clear as day that yes, these guys are fast and they are fast, which is kind of where it comes into a little kink in the road as far as typing. Me personally, typos all over the place. These things are so fast. Again, you barely press them, bam, and then they actuate right there. But very soft, very fast, very smooth. The version two bottoms out very nicely. Again, slap a little lube on them because these little metal bars around the switches there, they do stink and rattle and it's pretty darn annoying. All right, now coming over to the switch that is currently the talk of the town lately. That is the yellow optical switches. These guys are 35 grams of force, one millimeter of actuation and 3.2 millimeters of travel. So yes, as you can just kind of crunch all those numbers between all of them, the Gatoron yellows are the fastest and they are the lightest. So talking about being able to feel the speed again of the optical switches, the razor and then the optical yellows, we'll focus on both of these right here. Again, I stated you can tell the difference of the speed. You clear as day can, but it's really prominent in games like where they're popular, Fortnite, right? You guys are constantly going to town on your keyboard, building roofs and walls and doors and editing and this stuff, you know what I mean? That's where it comes into play and that's where it's beneficial, right? If you're like not gaming at all, there's like no reason to even consider these. You know, what do you need? You're some sort of fast typer, you know what I mean? I, I don't know, I, I wouldn't see it, you know? Me, I play tons of Call of Duty. I'm fast, I'm up in the action, and I'm usually in the top three, you know what I mean? Not, not, not to tout myself here or anything like that, you know what I mean? But um, again, for a game like Call of Duty, what would you do? Maybe peak an edge, something like that, you know? Again, it's not that beneficial in a game like this. Now, maybe if I was playing hardcore, that'd be different. So going a little bit faster, one shot, bam, you know what I mean? So want to be able to bob and weave a little quicker. That's where something like that would come into play. But again, even in that situation, it's not like this night and day massive thing. The only where I would place I would put these is again, as far as a game like Fortnite, I can't think of anything else that's really like Fortnite where you would need that. But again, as far as Fortnite, that's why I think these have that space in Fortnite because they're very beneficial for that. Now, on the other hand, as I'm over here saying that these are great for Fortnite, that's not saying like a basic mechanical keyboard is not good for Fortnite. Heck, Clicks, you all tell me, does he use this board? I've never watched him before. I'm sure he uses his own board, you know what I mean? And you can only use mechanical switches in this. Maybe he's using the silvers, you know what I mean? And still, these are much faster than the silvers there. And look how good he is. Obviously, I guess if he's got his own board, again, I haven't watched him, but we're gonna say he's good, you know what I mean? So again, you can kind of look at it like that. Are these gonna make you the best player ever out there? No, they're not, you know what I mean? You still need that skill and that practice and everything. Will this give you an advantage against another player? Probably not, it's just gonna depend on the other player. It might make it easier for you, again, just to flick and switch to those different uh, builds right there. That's where I think it is. Maybe it'll benefit you, but it's not gonna make you better than the person using this board. All right, so last topic here, and we'll roll our conclusion into this as well. And that's gonna be the price of these boards. Number one, starting with the clicks board over here. This guy is 115 before tax and ship, and I believe shipped to me was right around 135-ish, something like that, right? Talking about the Razer Huntsman TE, this guy is 130 bucks. So these guys you can almost put right online right there. Coming over to the GK61, SK61, DK61, DK61, whatever of these optical type of switch keyboards you have out there, these guys are cheap. This guy I believe is 54 bucks. I believe the GK61 has gone up to like, I think 70 bucks right now. And that one sometimes, Sometimes you can get it with yellow switches. Um, but again, don't limit yourself to that. You can find any optical keyboard and then buy yellow switches somewhere else. I don't know, there's multiple places. You gotta search online because it's been selling out quite quickly, you know what I mean? But multiple places sell them. And that's what I recommend you doing. Picking out whichever optical board you want and then slop in some yellow switches. I really like the SK61 because you can pick different variations and styles of it. So all in all, after talking about the price of them all right there, which one would I recommend? Honestly, none of them. 
I, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't want to use e any of these boards as my daily keyboard, you know what I mean? I guess which one I would say go get would be the GK61 or any of the S SK61s or 61s, whatever, just because they're, I guess, cheaper in price, but gosh, I'd hate to tell someone to go buy this board right here. It's not bad. Like I stated in the beginning, it's not great. It's not bad. It's just kind of right here. I'd put it a little bit below good. You know what I mean? It's just a budget keyboard and that's exactly what it is. It's a budget keyboard and that's what it feels like. I don't want to be like a peripheral snob. I've never wanted to be that, but I think for your money, you can just, there's just better options out there. The only reason you would buy this is for these yellow switches and that is it. You know, coming over to these two guys over here, especially let's start with the Razer one. As I stated in multiple reviews of this, I don't think this board is worth it at all out of the box. I don't. I think it's awesome to see this from a big company, a 60% keyboard. You know, they're, they're optical switches, which other companies, you know, they, they license these switches from A4 Tech or whatever. So I don't think it's worth 130 bucks at all. And then going right into the Matrix one, this is just a fluffed up GK61, as I stated in my other reviews. It looks the coolest, it sure does. So kind of look at it that way. As far as the Matrix, as I stated in my review, the way I put this one is, think about, do you want to support clicks, right? If you're a big fan of him. That's that's what you're doing here, you know what I mean? It's like a baseball or, or a basketball jersey, whatever, right? I got a David Wright jersey. Am I ever gonna be able to play baseball like him? No, I guess he's retired now, so maybe, you know? But back in the days, you know what I mean? No, I couldn't, but I like supporting him and stuff like that. You know, that's why we all buy any of that kind of stuff. So look at it like that. That's exactly what you're doing right here, which is a cool cause. It's really cool, you know what I mean? And the aesthetics of it look stinking awesome. But again, like I stated, I wouldn't really want any of these on my desk and they don't sit on my desk. They really don't. Right now, these three sitting here, if I had to use one, it would be the Razer, since it's modded. Out of the box, no way. This thing would fly over there like my uh, Model D minus just recently did, you know? But as it's modded like this, you hear a little bit of rattle. But man, it just feels good. It really, I'm a big silent fan switch, so maybe that might be why. But again, out of these three, I would want to use the Razer out of any of them. But still, I don't recommend it at 130 bucks. So what would I recommend, you're probably asking. Well, technically, you're just saying don't buy these. What would you recommend? I'd go Maya Pro. You all know I love Maya Pro. The Venus, the Hades, you know, what can I recommend down in the $50 range? I'm over here thinking, how much is the Ann Pro 2 these days? Right around 60 or 70? That's a good option. Not a great board, but it's a, it's a good option for sure. You know, Mecha Mini, you're talking up into 120 bucks. So you're getting this price range over here now. But heck, I'd even go, as much as y'all know, I love to hate and I hate to love the Ducky one too many. Like I love the board, but I, I just never, I always say it's never worth the money. I'd recommend that over any of these boards here. So hey, let me know down in the comments which keyboard you use or why you're looking into one of these keyboards. Again, I'm just truly, genuinely uh, curious right here. Are you getting a clicks because you're a fan of clicks? Are you getting a razor because well, you love Razer. We know a lot of people do, you know what I mean? And are you getting the optical yellow shoes because everyone's saying it's the hottest new Fortnite thing to use? Please let me know. I'm just honestly curious down below. I mean, I got them all because I review tech and I like to test them out, you know what I mean? But again, I don't use any of them. I use the Varmelo Maya Pro as my main daily every keyboard. And I have one in like every switch. So hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this comparison, uh, review, whatever here. I hope I was able to help you out if you're looking into any of these boards right here. If you got any other questions, definitely ask in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter at the Techni one I'll definitely be more glad to uh, talk shop with you about them right there. But again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.